Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today we are going to discuss on the transit of Guru Maharaj, Jupiter in the Nakshatra of Mula. This is a very important transit. And in my opinion, after analyzing and experiencing all the different transits of this year, I feel that this is probably going to be the most important transit. In fact, I think this is even more important than the transit of Jupiter in Sagittarius itself and the transit of Saturn, which is happening next year in the sign of Capricorn. Why do I say that? Because this is a very crucial junction of the horoscope where Jupiter is now transiting, all right? So we, we will discuss about it in short. And yes, as usual, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, you will find my website below in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and now you must find him. All right, so Jupiter is transiting in his Mool Trikon Rashi Sagittarius. And within that, currently he is in Mula Nakshatra. And this is very important because Mula Nakshatra is the Nakshatra which is ruled by Ketu. And the zodiac sign is Sagittarius, which is ruled by Jupiter itself. So this is a very crucial point because the planet that represents spirituality is transiting in the sign of spirituality, in the nakshatra of spirituality. <laughs> but of course, there are many uh, conditions. Do you remember sometimes you sign some papers and you don't read it properly? <laughs> and then after that, uh, somebody calls you and says, Oh, sir, you didn't make the payment. And you're like, payment for what? <laughs> Do you remember two years back on that day in that beach you had signed one paper in that you had agreed to uh, pay me 100 bucks for this, for that. And then you were like wondering, oh, when did I sign, when did I sign, when did I sign? And then suddenly you remember, yes, I signed it, but there was no clause like that, that I have to pay 100. And then you ask the person and the person is like, my dear sir, below at the bottom, there was one small query, conditions apply, <laughs> which you did not bother to read or you did not bother to ask, what is this conditions apply? And somewhere down in the next page, somewhere it was written, you know, pay 100 bucks, but they know that you would not check and that's how they trap you. So similarly, this placement, this transit is also like that. So there's a lot of energy which is there. There's a lot of empowering energy which we can use for our benefit. But there's also a conditions apply. What is that condition or conditions apply? Well, that will depend on the individual horoscope. But at a generic sense, you have to understand that you have to make some sacrifice because see, under, try to understand where the nakshatras are flowing. So just don't uh, think like, oh, Guru has entered Mula, this will happen, that will happen. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to understand the progression of nakshatras. Without that, you really can't understand any nakshatra. So, for example, if you uh, want to understand what Kritika Nakshatra is, you must understand what Bharani Nakshatra is and what is Rohini Nakshatra. Because before Kritika, Bharani comes and then after Kritika, Rohini comes. So, therefore, it's crucial that when we are studying Nakshatras, we study the Nakshatra previous and the Nakshatra which is next. Okay, so we all know which nakshatra is before, previous to uh, Mula nakshatra. Yes, that is the nakshatra jeshtha, which is in Scorpio, the last degrees of Scorpio. 
and surprising enough, not surprising in fact, the last degree of Jaishta and the first degree of Mula is known as Gandanta zone. Yes, I have made some videos on Gandanta planets. So please, please watch those videos to know more about Gandanta. But Gandanta generally, what does it mean? Gandanta means that there is a change which is coming. Either you accept it or you don't. But the change has to happen. So therefore, I always say the best thing to do during Gandanta transits, when planets are transiting in these Gandanta zones, is to not try to control things. By that, I don't mean to say that you become irresponsible with your life. No, you do your responsibilities properly. But try to give up this conception that this should be like this or that should be like that. He should be like this. She should be like that. Because when planets are transiting Gandanta zones, then our karmic baggages open up. And the best thing to do when the Gandanta zone is active is to just let things flow accordingly. Don't try to force things or force people. You anyways can't, but sometimes we try and we get baffled ourselves. And Jupiter had crossed the Gandanta zone. All right, some time back, but now it is still in Mula Nakshatra. So, as I said, you have to understand Jeshta Nakshatra first. So, what is Jeshta Nakshatra? What is that one word that summarizes Jeshta Nakshatra? Well, for that, you have to read the Srimad Bhagavatam. In Srimad Bhagavatam, the story of Vritrasur is there, which is linked to Jeshta Nakshatra. It is linked to Indra, the story of Chitraketu Maharaj is there. Alright, so go, go to Google and just type Srimad Bhagavatam Chitraketu. You will find it. So, I would like to share some points from the story of Chitraketu Maharaj, which is very, very, very crucial for understanding Jeshta Nakshatra. Otherwise, you will not understand what Jeshta is. So, Chitraketu Maharaj, he was a great personality, of course. But he had everything, yet one small thing was not there with him. He did not have a son to uh, take over. Take over means who, who will rule after him, who will be the prince, who will be the next king. So he was always in anxiety and he had uh, many wives, but unfortunately uh, there was no... Uh, there was no son and he always used to be in anxiety and depression and he was a terribly in a terribly miserable state because of this even though he had everything in life but just this one thing ruined his life completely or at least he felt like that he used to think that what will happen to my uh, to my dynasty who will offer oblations to my ancestors and to me myself after I die so therefore I need a son somehow but the problem was he did not have a son in his karma all right and then somehow by the blessings of somebody <laughs> if you know who that somebody is then write it down in the comments let me see how many of you just googled it so he got a son but there was a conditions apply again there conditions start from jishta nakshatra the condition was that because the sun was not there in his karma so therefore he would get a son who who will give him pleasure but at the same time that that amount of suffering also which he would anyways have by not having the sun it's a very peculiar situation and that is why his son was named Harsha Shoka. Harsha means happiness, pleasure, enjoyment. And Shoka means sorrow, suffering, misery. So imagine somebody naming his son, you know, Harsha Shoka. Both Harsha and Shoka you will experience. So then what happened? He begot a son through one of his wives. And it's a very long story. And because of that, uh, he became very much affectionate towards the mother of this child. And because of that, the other queens became jealous 
and out of their jealousy envy and hatred they went and murdered this small baby they gave him poison and this baby died and chitraketu maharaj heard the news and he was completely devastated imagine a man who wanted a son and he got and then later on he lost his son like this and then somebody again came is <laughs> that same somebody who had blessed him and then what happens the the dead son starts speaking he speaks to chitraketu that oh what is this uh, who what are you talking of father and son in this life you are my father and i am your son maybe in next life i am your father and you are my son so he spoke very lofty spiritual philosophy and then by hearing him chitraketu maharaj was completely transformed and he gave up his obsession for materialistic pleasure and then later on he did so many yagyas and he did so much spiritual practices he he just gave everything that he had and by that lord vishnu personally appeared and he got a very elevated position later on he became uh, one of the vidyadharas you know, gandharvas very very uh, senior position you know siddhas actually and by that he uh, enjoyed lot of pleasures later on and one day mother parvati had cast him to become a demon it's a very long story i'm just cutting it short it's a very interesting story you can read it and then he becomes vritrasur all right so the first lesson which you need to learn in jeshtha nakshatra is if something is not there in your karma even if you get it by any means you will not be able to get any pleasure out of it all right and then what happens indra tries to kill vitrasur who is chitraketu maharaj himself but indra can't kill because chitraketu maharaj because vitrasur is so powerful and then they go to lord vishnu and then lord vishnu tells indra and the demig and the devatas that you have to go to the great sage dadichi and dadichi will give you the uh dadichi's bones will help you in making a vajra and by the use of that vajra his back bones you will be able to kill vritrasur and then indra does that he goes to dadichi rishi and says my dear dadichi rishi please give me your back bone <laughs> and dadichi rishi is a great sage he gives it ultimately and by that after long 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 hours and days and <laughs> millennium in fact finally chitraketu maharaj who is now vitrasur is dead all right but there's another condition here of course he dies finally but vitrasur because he was chitraketu maharaj in his previous life and he had perfected himself totally completely therefore he goes back to the spiritual world to the abode of lord shankarshan who is none other than vishnu himself and what happens is indra although he wins the match he stays back in this material world to enjoy the realm of the heavens all right so that's another lesson with jeshtha nakshatra that sometimes you may think that you are fighting 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 and you are winning but maybe at the end you lose it or even if you win but that uh, victory is of no value and then indra is haunted you know he is running 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 and then sin personified is chasing him because he had killed vishwarupa also there is another lesson why indra had killed vishwarupa that's a long story i'll not explain but jeshtha nakshatra has another thing which they have to master that is self control you no know, instinct oh my god i want i feel like doing this i will do it now without thinking just do it all right so that is one very big challenge and there's another positive side to chitraketu maharaj's story that they can undergo a lot of transformation and change and you know still somehow fight at the end and now you come to mula nakshatra 
So then what happens? Indra has to do a lot of penance and tapasya and, you know, it's like a crazy stuff there. All right. So now linking it with astrology. Last year, or sorry, this year itself, Jupiter had been into Jeshta Nakshatra for very long. In fact, it was in Mula. All right. And then it went retrograde. So when Jupiter was in Jeshta Nakshatra, which is primarily throughout this year, you have to analyze the houses which Jupiter rules in the chart. Did you do something which you should have not done? Anything related to those houses? Jupiter, 7th Lord, marriage, married partner, 10th Lord, career, anything it can be. Lagna Lord, yourself, your body. All right. Did you do something which you should have not done? Well, if yes, now is the time to correct it. Because later on when Jupiter enters Purva Shada, Purva Shada is the nakshatra of uh, penance actually. Tapasya. All right. But to what extent you have to do Tapasya? To what extent you have to jump in the fire? That will be decided during Mula Nakshatra. So till 6 January 2020, is it 6th or 5th, either of these two days, depending on where you stay, you have time. So today I'm making this video and you can see the time. Two weeks, three weeks you have. Or three, three and a half weeks. So now is the time that you correct the wrongdoings. Whatever it was, any injustice you did towards anybody or maybe towards yourself, maybe you were doing something which you should have not done to yourself. Now, when I say you should have not done, that does not mean something wrong necessarily. It means you are kind of lying to yourself, it could be. So, for example, it could happen that if Jupiter is your, suppose for example, 10th Lord, it could happen that you are doing some work in your career which you did not like and you were cheating yourself. You were like, no, no, I, I should do this. I am meant to do this. And then later on, it just didn't work out. But now is the time before 6 January, you should clear off the dues and you should stop pretending to yourself. You have to accept that you don't lie somewhere. It can be anything. Alright, so Jupiter 9th Lord I have seen. Did you hide something from your guru or from your guide or from your seniors? If you have done it, please go and reveal. Otherwise, there are chances if, uh, if the horoscope is indicating in the dashas, then it could happen that people may come to know about it when Jupiter enters Purvashada. Alright, so don't take risk and just be yourself. Just be honest and just go and just say it. Just do it. Don't think too much. <laughs> That's the problem. Before doing good things, we keep thinking too much. And before doing wrong stuff, we never think. We just go and do. All right. So there's a lot of fancy stuff about Jeshta Nakshatra. In the, inter in, in, in the internet, for example, Jeshta is in, in Indra's Nakshatra, this, that. But what are the lessons from Jeshta Nakshatra? That is the most crucial stuff, which you will only find in the Srimad Bhagavatam. You will not find anywhere else. It's simply not possible. All right. So please type Chitra Ketu Maharaj Srimad Bhagavatam. You will find, you will find amazing. If you just know the story, you know Jeshtha Nakshatra, you know Mula Nakshatra, and you know Purva Shada Nakshatra. All these three in one shot. So, coming back to the point, conditions apply. So now, the thing is, you know, something has to be done and something was not done. And you also know, if you don't do something which you should do, then later on you might have to pay a price. So, how to do that which you don't want to do well? By doing Tapasya, by doing penance by doing sacrifice all right tapasya gives the power to do things which uh, you hate to do so for example there are many people who uh, 
follow celibacy for going ahead in their spiritual path? Well, how do they follow celibacy? How is it possible that the entire world, the material world is just running like dogs behind the opposite sex? And how is it possible that somebody can uh, stay without the opposite sex? How is it possible? Happily. Wanting and not getting is a different thing. <laughs> but not wanting and being happy, that is a totally different thing. How, how do they have so much power to resist the temptations of the opposite sex? How? How, 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 how? Because they do tapasya. Getting up early in the morning, then doing their uh, spiritual practices. Yes. And now suppose you are a householder and you are thinking, oh my God, what will happen? Only celibates can improve spiritually. Advance. What about me? No, you can also improve. I just gave an example to show the power of austerity. Right? So, the point is that if we see that our life is not in order, especially regarding the houses with Jupiter rules, then till 6 January we have the time to start working on it. Because later on things may go in a way which we feel that, oh, anyways, now there's nothing which I can do. I can just flow with the flow. Because Purva Shada is also water, you know, apa. Water, once you get down, it's like you're flowing. There's no uh, stop. <laughs> yes, so now is the time that you take control of your life. Two weeks, three weeks. This time you have. Don't waste this time. Don't lose this time. Have a proper schedule. Get up in the morning. Do spiritual practices. By that, your life will come to order. Otherwise, you'll just be running around you know, astrologers or books or you know movies or whatever it is youtube you know, finding things which you will never ever find all right so invest some time in reading scriptures like the bhagavad gita or the bible the quran shrimad bhagavatam ramayana or mahabharat by this you will learn what divinity is and in the weekends try to associate yourself with a spiritual community and take enlightenment from gurus, sadhus, rishis, whoever you find, bona fide and genuine. All right, don't just go on listening to anybody and everybody. That's that will do more damage. In fact, all right. So use your intelligence in a proper way and learn the secrets and the truths of divinity of the universe, and by that. This transit of Jupiter into the nakshatra of Ketu, which is Mula nakshatra, which is also the galactic center of the universe, will benefit you abundantly. Unlimitedly, it will benefit you because now imagine you are getting cleansed of all the sins and you have just surrendered completely. So now is the time that you surrender to God. Krishna says in the Gita, no? Sarva dharman parityat jamam ekam sharanam raja ham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha ishami masuchaha. Do not fear, masuchaha, he says. Sarva dharman parityat ja. Alright, so it's the best time. I don't know what your new year plans are, but this should be your new year plan. Alright. Finish at least one chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. This is your, this should be your new year plan actually because after 7th jupiter is going to enter purvashada and then after that you will just flow all right so before getting into the river get into the boat and the scriptures give the example that the guru is like the captain of the boat boat is the spirituality and the guru is like the captain who knows where to take the boat which direction Right, so take blessings from your Guru. And when I say blessings, it is not just this. Guruji, Ashirvad Dijiye, Sab Shubh Ho, Shubh Ho, Mangal Mai Ho, Mangal Kamana Ho, Shubh Ho, Shubh Ho, Sab Shubh Ho, Shubh, Shubh, Shubh. This is not nonsense Shubh, alright? This is nothing, uh, there is no Shubh actually in this material world. It's only Ashubh. <laughs> shubh is only when you... Uh, go towards divinity. Only then there is something Shubh. 
all right otherwise there's nothing shubh in this world it's only ashubh unfortunately whoever gives you the blessing it's of no use all right so instead of uh, taking photos in instagram of you know selfie with guru ji like this like this the people keep doing these things also i have seen i don't know how how they are <laughs> so go and fall at the feet of your guru and ask him that please bestow me spiritual wisdom because only the guru can save us nobody else right so that is it from my side if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with your friends family members and relatives cousins everybody and if you want a consultation from me please go down to the description section below to my website and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you must find him now before december or oh, january 6th 2020 right even if you don't find you can still try later <laughs>